All right, so in the last video, we left off creating a person and that all worked great and things were uh, made sense. But now we wanna think about that we have different types of people at our school. And one type of person that we have would be a student. So, and a student, I would argue, is a person with some unique qualities that make it different from a teacher, for example, or a little bit more specific than just a general person. So this is what inheritance is all about. So I'm gonna right click on my project name and add to project. And I'm gonna call this one uh, student.h. And so in my student.h, we'll create the class. Uh, we're gonna, on this one, we're gonna include with the hashtag include person dot h and because we are definitely going to want to have this file in our student file because we're going to be inheriting so i'm going to do a class student open and close curly brace with the semicolon all right and we'll do the public and we need to make a constructor which I will do here. Let's see, I'll do a student. And for now, I'll make it a no argument constructor. So you can stamp out a blank student, which is not ideally what we're going to want to end up with, but it's where I'm starting off at this point. All right, so in the main, I'm just going to kind of go with this thought at the moment. In the main, I'm no longer going to uh, include the person. I'm gonna include the student. And then just for um, clarity, making sure my code works. I'm going to comment this por portion out so I just have a piece working at a time. And I'm going to stamp out a student. Student. And I think that will be all I need for the short run because we didn't require any parameters to be, or arguments to be sent. So, and everything should work out just fine. Okay. So let's elaborate on the student. I'm going to add a private some private members. I'm just going to add one for sake of simplicity on this video. And I'm going to make private, uh, I'm going to do a string and we'll call it year. And this represents like, are they a freshman, um, sophomore, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's what that string is going to represent. And so when I allow you to allow you, meaning whoever has access to, or what I provide public handles for, for lack of other words, um, I want to make sure that you give me a year. So I'm going to do string and the year. And then I'm going to update year equals to the year. So we've seen this before. But what we just said was that a student should inherit qualities from a person because a student is a person after all. I sound like a Dr. Seuss thing. Anyway, so here's how we do that. We're gonna, in front of the word class student, we're gonna add a colon and I'm gonna write the word public and person, which is a way of saying, we call it a derived class. It's called a derived class. I'll write that in just so you see the fancy words. So what we're saying is that when we stamp out a student, it's also stamping out a person because a student is inheriting from a person. And let me see if I can demonstrate that. So uh, in my person here, I'm going to type out, see out a person is born just so we can see it happening and then in our constructor here i'm going to type out uh, see out a student is born and we still have one problem let me just go ahead and, and compile this to see if in fact i get an error and it is giving me an error because it's saying no matching function call for person and so what's happening here is that if we're if the compiler says if you want me to stamp out a student and a student is inheriting from person in order to create a person there's are some requirements and that is a person requires a first name a last name and a social security number so the rules still apply so a student that is inheriting from a person 
must still acknowledge the rules of the person, which makes sense, right? I can't create a person that's a student if I'm not following the rules, and that is that a person has to have these things that we talked about before. So in order to create a student, if you're going to create a student, then I also have to ask you to, I'm just going to copy and paste this stuff over. I'm going to, you also have to provide the same information that you would if you were stamping out a person directly. And then what hence happening is I, the student class, am going to send those things up the chain. So now I'm going to send to the person the values that it wants. So it wants a first name. So I'm going to send first and then that I received as a student. Hope this makes sense. And then uh, I need a string that was last. Well, student received last here. So I'll put that here. And then I also need the social security number. And so we'll put that here. And so uh, right here. Okay. So what's happening then, and I'll go ahead and run this from the main, when we create a student, students inheriting from person. So the first thing that'll happen is the person gets created and the person's going to be sent the data that it requires to be created. And all of these things are going to happen just as if we had called it directly, but the student's calling it this time. And then the student will be created along with the specific things that are unique to the student. So let's see if we can get that to run. So now we have student, but there are requirements, right? We have to send and I don't remember the order in which I sent these, so let me move these over to the other view so I can see them in order. Okay, so student uh, requires the year, so we'll make this student a freshman. I'm just gonna do fresh. I think they call them frosh sometimes when you wanna be cool, right? I don't know. Anyway, uh, and then this person is going to be, um, uh, I don't know, JD. And then the last name is gonna be Wyatt. What? Wyatt? That doesn't spell Wyatt, but that's okay. And uh, 87654. Okay, so now let's see what happens. We should see this information being generated. So let's see, let's going to run it and see what happens. All right, so first a person was born. And then, oh, that's because we ran two. I was like, why were two people being born? <laughs> because we had the person that was born up here. That one ran, that was Indy. And then we came down here and we instantiated a student. So the student ran the person and then the student got created. So the student inherited everything from the person. So let me elaborate on what that would mean then. That means that the student has everything the person has without having to recreate it in the student class. In other words, we know that person got initiated instantiated and so we should then be able to send to utilize set last name let's use get full name okay and so that means that student that we created should have access to and you can see it here has access to all of the things that a person has access to plus the individual things that a student has access to and so I know this is hard to see but so student has access to persons get full name public function and it also has access to set the first name public function of the person, but it also has things that just the student has access to. So let's just try this. Let's do get full name and see if that works. So get full name, return something. So we have to see out that. Okay, and so now we should be able to, I'm gonna undo this one. We're just doing one at a time. All right, so now we should get the semicolon error. <laughs> Now we should get a person is born, a student is born, and now we can see that J.D. Watt was born. So let's do something that's specific to the student. So we have year, so let's do accessors and accessors, which are the fancy words, accessors or mutators is what they're called. And another easier way to, to, to English way to express that is accessors are getters. So we need to allow our users to get some information or sitters. We're allow, allow, allowing our users to communicate to set information. So those are synonymous. All right. So we're going to create a getter for the year. 
So we could do, so if we're getting a getter, we need to return, so they're, they're getting access to whatever we put into year. So we're gonna return a string. And then again, we use something that sounds like a getter or setter, so we're gonna say get year. So that's pretty clear that that's getting our year data. Now it's returning a string, so all we need to do is return year. And then we're gonna do a setter, which is not gonna return anything, but set year. And then we need to receive a string, which is the new year, the, uh, the year. And then we're gonna set that value. So our value is year here. So we're going to say year equals whatever was sent into this function. I'm not doing any validation in here because we did that in the last video, but um, of course that's the purpose of being able to control access to our data. All right, so the point here is I'm gonna just build so that way I know I did everything correctly. Yes, everything, no errors. And so now that I have verified or proven that I have access to the person's specific functions or data, I'm also going to verify that I have access to the student's information or public functions. So I'm gonna say student and let's do get year. Get, I wasn't paying attention, get year. And so get year is returning something, so I need to see out that. I'm gonna do an end L just so things get a little bit cleaner. And then I guess I also can set a year, so maybe I should do that first. So let's do student set year, and we'll make them a sophomore now. And so then we should be able to see it. So let's go ahead and run that and see how that all played out. I hit the wrong one, there we go. And so we see a person is born, person J.D. Wyatt, but now we see that they're a sophomore. So what we've demonstrated here is this idea where we are creating a inheritance. We're saying that a student is a person, and because a student is a person, the student has access to everything that the person has access to, plus a subset or a smaller set of things that might be specific to the student, or to the person, to the student. No, I said that right. I was thinking ahead of myself and wasn't listening to what I was saying. Kind of like what my husband does. Never mind, that's another story. So um, anyway, hopefully this helps demonstrate the idea of inheritance. In the next video, we'll just kind of elaborate on that and create a teacher person.